Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, James Balzer again. We're on uh, part two of our interview with uh, Lieutenant Colonel and former policeman Robert Garcia. Robert, if you could talk about one of the issues we brought up was Bagram Airport. Could you talk about what we left Bagram and what the mistake made there, what it was? Bagram Airport was the key to that war that we had there. It was imagine O'Hare airfield, but in Afghanistan. That's how big this airport was. We had facilities that could house tens of thousands of soldiers, and they were hard billets where any incoming could be, you know, be, the soldier could be protected from, or whoever was there, from uh, incoming artillery. But it, it was surrounded by open space, so it was tough to hit. You know? And they had huge runways, 24-7 operations. The, the Air Force, it, it was like being uh, oh, let me Let me ask you quick, you said huge runways. From what I understand, the airport they're at now in Kabul, it's one airstrip, it's one? Correct, correct. Versus having... They, they had two O'Hare style runways. So they could have been taking more people out. Oh, the, the more people, uh, they could have flown in uh, heavier, uh, uh, jets, equipment, uh, and Bagram right now is the leverage point. If the United States wanted to leverage something, that's what they would leverage. Bagram. The Chinese, according to what I'm reading and what I'm seeing, they're going to take over and they're going to need landing strips for their enormous aircraft. The Chinese want to uh, maximize their uh, efforts in getting all the minerals out of Afghanistan. When I was there, every time we had an engagement and had to drop a 2,000 pound bomb on the side of a mountain, within hours the kids would be up there picking up all the quartz, all the, the valuable minerals, and they would be, you know, using those, you know, to uh, profit from. And it's incredible. I mean, I think about Vietnam again. When we would bomb, they would pick up what was left of the bombs and use that. And Bagram is this big open space where sappers, terrorists can't get, they'd have a tougher time getting into them. Like, oh, correct. Uh, it, it, you just have to look in, uh, in uh, Google Earth and you'll see how big Bagram is. And why did they abandon Bagram for Kabul, for this airport? I, I can't believe that, they're, that they didn't use that intelligence unless that was part of the deal. No, yeah, right. Unless they said, we're gonna be leaving, we're gonna give you Bagram, we're gonna leave it the way it is, with all the facilities, and uh, we're leaving. But according to what, what they're saying now, uh, we left that in the night, turned off the power, and uh, they didn't even know we were leaving. Wow, I, if that's true, that's again, that's a sad commentary. It's on criminal. What's, on what's happened uh, with this. I. I don't know who's in charge or what they're thinking was. In fairness to them, we don't know what they're thinking was. But we have to keep drilling down on this and answering questions. I mean, seeing these huge, I mean, what, what type of planes are they landing at, at, uh, at Kabul? What are they? C-17s. C-17s going down a runway with hundreds of people chasing right. them. I don't even see that in Vietnam. I, I didn't see that in Vietnam. I think not. They were pulling people off from helicopters, you know, but not all these poor Afghans trying to get on these on these planes. Correct. Uh, we have Bagram, we also have uh, Jalalabad Airport there, and then we have the airport in Kandahar. So, and these, uh, Jalalabad was a, a midway airport type mm -hmm. uh, air, airport, and, uh, Jalal, uh, and uh, Kandahar was uh, somewhere in between O'Hare and Midway, that, that type of air, airport. Do you, do you think their thoughts were consolidate this. I mean, I'm trying to think what their thing was as we were talking, trying to think what their thinking was. Okay, we'll consolidate it. We have one airstrip to defend. We can put the troops around it. Uh, your uh, thoughts on that? If they were going to do that, they would. They should have done it in Bagram. That was defendable. That was defendable. Kabul is surrounded by a major city. <laughs> Kabul. You it's, know? Like, it's like it would be Midway Airport. It would be Midway Airport. It would be, uh, imagine Berlin. Yeah, the bur yeah, yeah. You know, you have an airport in the, in, in the, surrounded by all kind of buildings, and if you have to fight now, now you have to fight house to house, rooftop to rooftop, and uh, 
repelling all these uh, uh, terrorists that are under. I mean, I, I understand that they have to trust the Taliban to a certain extent, but my God, I mean, it's beyond belief. I, 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 don't, I don't understand it. That, that's a problem. You hit the nail on the head. Trust. We trusted them. We should have never trusted them. Yeah, They're that. our enemy. Yeah. We should have never trusted them. That's where this investigation that I was talking about earlier has to happen. What happened? This, this, all these top generals, all these top leaders, all these congressmen that are head of the Armed Service Committee, they have to be, they have to have their, you know, I, I have to be you, I guarantee you as a former politician, they will be ducking for cover. They're going to be ducking for cover. They will become invisible, if you will. Uh, they will be hiding. It'll be the Belaine game, passing the buck. Oh, I, I didn't know. I, you know, I told this guy, and I, I sent this one a memo, and I said we should do this, and it'll keep going on. And here, was was anyone ever held accountable for Beirut? What, what happened at the airport in Beirut when all those Marines were killed? 260-some killed? Was anybody ever brought to justice? I mean, on, on the American side? Why, why weren't the Americans armed? Why did they have, uh, you couldn't put uh, magazines in your weapons? I mean, it's terrible. Right, uh, that, that I don't know, but uh, what happened in uh, Beirut, I remember I was in the military, that was my, my kind of, I think it was 1983, and, and, that, and uh, so I remember when that happened, and you know, a lot of that, because of that happening, it, uh, we learned a lot of uh, force protection for our, uh, entrances to our buildings and uh, entrances to our uh, sites. So, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, many Marines got killed. Army, 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 yeah. And uh, so, uh, but I don't know if anything ever came No, what I was getting at is, were any, was any political leaders held accountable? I, to, to the best of my knowledge, no. But back, back to this airlift now that, that we have, we have a deadline on it of August 31st. What is your opinion on that? Uh, once you give a deadline, now either A, you're going to have to break it, or B, you're going to have to stick with it. And I say, we don't tell them. <laughs> we just, uh, I say we keep on going until all our American citizens and Afghan partners that want to leave you know, have left. I, I believe we owe it to our Afghan partners, the people that supported us, to get them all out, not to leave them behind. Uh, I, I think you can, the Taliban, they're not a nice group of uh, huh, people, am I right? Right, uh, that's correct, uh, they're, they're very uh, very ruthless, and what they do with humans uh, uh, is very ruthless. L look how they treat their women. Yeah, they're, they're terrible with rights for women. They're, 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 they, they treat people terrible, and uh, they're almost comparable, I'm going to say, to the cartels in Mexico. Oh, I say the cartels in Mexico are more ruthless than the Taliban. That's quite a statement. I, uh, yes. Let me, let me ask you about uh, leaving Americans behind. What would you do if I made you president right now, President Garcia? What would your first act be right uh, now? Right now, I would, like I said, I would uh, leverage Bagram Airport, Kandahar Airport. I would give them the ultimatum. Anything happens within the next uh, week, we're going to create our Bagram. Because that, that's the key. That's a key line of communication. If anything happens, we're going to level Kandahar Airport. How would you, I mean, you'd have to get, from what I understand now, and I don't know how accurate this is, everything is fluid, but they're telling the Americans to stay inside their homes in, in, in Afghanistan, and the intelligent Afghans to stay there and basically hunker down. How do they get out? That's uh, that's why that's why I would leverage whatever you can leverage, and Bagram is a leverage point because they don't have the they don't have the machinery or they don't have the money to uh, to rebuild it. I know those run. Oh yeah, I see what you. Okay, well that's that's interesting. Uh, you had these Marines, brave men, and I don't know if any women were killed, but you have ten Marines, two Army. One Navy corpsman killed uh, uh, quite a few wounded. I, do you know the number of wounded military, U.S. military personnel? No, that I, that I don't know. I, I imagine you know, a lot. And uh, 120 or 30 Afghans killed. Uh, and I understand they 
they, there was a drone strike today or yesterday that took out supposedly the leader of this uh, terrorist group. Took out a planner. Took out a, they, one they, planner. Allegedly. One planner. One planner. Uh, and the president said he will seek, you know, they'll, they'll be held accountable. He's going to seek them out and do what's, what, what's necessary. Once we leave there, how do you accomplish the mission? Uh, once we leave, how do we accomplish the mission? Of getting, of taking out these terrorists that need to be taken out. It's going to be really tough because we have no more, uh, we don't have a foothold. No assets. We don't have uh, anybody in there. No, no. It, it's a, it's a, a loose proposition there. Thank you, Robert. We are going to uh, go to uh, interview number three, our last interview with Robert.